This may seem like an odd time of the year to be talking about ice, but some of the biggest news in weather and climate these past few weeks involved ice, or more precisely, the lack of it. In mid-September, sea ice in the Arctic reached its lowest aerial extent since 1979 when we started measuring it from satellites. The annual minimum in Arctic sea ice occurs near the end of summer, and this year's minimum was almost 20% less than the previous record low. This chart shows the annual cycle using data from the 1980s. The maximum coverage usually occurs in mid-March near the end of winter, almost 6 million square miles, about twice the area of the lower 48 states. Now here's the average for the 1990s, down a little at the peak, more so at the minimum. Now here's the average for the first decade of this century. Again, the peak ice cover down a little, but the trend over time at the minimum is noticeably downward. And finally, here's this year. Focus on this minimum. Compared to the average in the 1980s, the ice cover has been cut in half, a loss of about 1.4 million square miles, or almost half the area of the lower 48 states. Check out this comparison. This is the ice cover in mid-September of 1984. Now here's September 13th of this year, a clear and dramatic difference. This year's big melt was helped by an unusually powerful and long-lived storm over the Arctic back in August. Its strong winds really jostled the ice around. The fastest are shown in red here. And when they blew from the south ahead of the storm, warm air was drawn deep into the Arctic. Regardless of what's behind the reduced ice cover, and global warming is the prime suspect in the long term, here's why it matters. Ice reflects about 80% of the sun's rays, while the darker ocean reflects much less. As sea ice cover decreases in summer, sunshine that would have been reflected back to space by the ice is instead taken in by the ocean, heating the water and make it, making it easier for more ice to melt. That extra heat is eventually released into the air, and in fact, near surface temperatures in autumn in much of the Arctic have gone up 4 to 8 degrees in recent decades. And this has important effects outside the Arctic because the westerly jet stream that so profoundly affects our weather originates from the north-south temperature difference between the Arctic and warmer areas to the south. If you warm up the Arctic, you reduce that temperature gradient and those upper level westerly winds slow down. This in turn slows the movement of waves in the jet stream. And because these waves control the movement of storms, in general storms move slower and the weather will seem to get stuck more often be more persistent. A warmer Arctic also means that when the jet gets wavy, the northward bulges of the waves, the so-called ridges, will warm more than normal, which will cause them to stretch a little farther north, increasing the overall amplitude of the waves. And bigger dips in the jet tend to make stronger storms and lead to more extreme temperature patterns. And bigger waves move slower, another reason for the weather they bring to be more persistent. This is a fascinating area of cutting-edge research right now, trying to link long-term changes in the climate of the Arctic to changes in weather patterns in the mid-latitudes. Stay tuned. Fred is back with the extended forecast next.